Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about <laughs> it's core skills, yeah, so let's get into it. So the question in question was posted on an old video of mine where I'm assuming that I mentioned the term core skills. Hi, hi, hi Frederick, thanks for the video. I have a follow-up question. I'm a back-end developer with less than two years experience and question number one is what are these core skills? It just keeps on changing with the role experience in the company. One year ago I was expected to be able to code code a well scoped out problem now I have to do the scoping and enable new members sometimes more experienced dev to be able to code that solution yes okay so there's a second question here as well okay uh, so of course skills f first and foremost uh, well it basically comes down to you knowing how to work in the mainstream professional way that is expected by most companies and you might think that that is going to be like the same but it's usually not like uh, as you said yourself here there it varies a little bit from company to company yeah there are fluctuations between one stack and another where it might differ a little bit on the language or you might be using something that is slightly uh, slightly slight bit different my favorite example of this like sort of when you really see the differences in do you actually know what you're doing or do you know something I, or, or are you not as educated as you might need to be in order to handle these sort of flexations this is sort of the the argument I make for learning, actually knowing what you're doing versus knowing some tool that does the thing for you that might not be universal. CSS is my favorite example to, and now this is a backend developer, so we could take a backend example, but I think CSS is the one that is usually the most telling. So a average front-end developer by, the, by today's standards will basically need to know how to write CSS. This is true because this is the core of what you are doing. You are writing CSS to style a web page in some fashion. Now nobody is going to expect you to be a master of everything CSS related but there are more than a few uh, so-called front-end developers who don't actually know how to do this because they're only able to style a web page or something like that using a CSS framework or something like Bootstrap, Tailwind, like Foundation, doesn't really matter. They're only able to do it that way. Or they're only able to do it if they're allowed to use a CSS and JS solution. But they don't they they don't know the basics. I've interviewed candidates who are supposed to be seniors who don't know what a media query is. And that's not a senior, that's a that's a person who knows a tool. That's like a WordPress developer claiming that they're a professional enterprise level uh, architect. No, you're not. You lack the core skills to do that job. And sure, the role that you have and this, I mean, it's not like these people haven't, you know, unless they're all lying whenever I interview them about their backgrounds. I don't think that's the case. Usually what you see is that in some cases you might find a specific role or you might find like a consultancy work which because they're usually consultants or they're working in some company somewhere where like there is a certain work practice for how you do things but as a software developer as a true professional you have to understand the difference between what's specific to this company and what is common to the industry that is the key thing and if you don't understand that difference and you don't know what's actually considered to be mainstream you're not you don't really have those core skills because the the test that I like to tell people is it's very simple really if I take you from one company and move you to another company with a very similar because it's never exactly the same usually it's never identical but it's usually common that you have sort of the same tools. Will you be able to survive in that environment? Will you be able to do the job? 
because that is what a mid-level developer is bringing to the table usually when you're a professional like when you have one to five years of experience roughly that is where you should be you should be in a situ in a position where I as an employer will be able to tell that uh, yeah if I give you a job here I'm not gonna have to train you from scratch you are you already have prior knowledge and you sort of know how to maneuver in this environment that is what core skills is about and that is like a gigantic area but I mean it basically comes down to these very general areas you need to know your stack whatever stack you're working with all the tools and so forth you need to know how modern web applications are built like how do like is how do APIs work HTTP HTTPS how do version you version control the like deployment pipelines CI pipelines <laughs> all of this stuff that's how a real professional uh, application, web application, by and like that. That's how you do it in a fairly in like the serious environments when you're working on bigger projects. It's not something that, as I t tell people, it's not that common that you will be able to learn all this stuff if you only work on your own projects. It's like when you work in teams and when you work at a higher level, you usually get this stuff. And then you need to know how to do agile work or like how the like the soft skills part of it all, which is like story preparation, grooming if you're using scrum or whatever you're using like all of these different patterns which makes you comfortable in the environment in the work environment and then of course testing how do you test your code how do you make sure that everything works do you understand how to check you know how, how law uh, making sure that things are running well in production and like all of this sort of stuff that comes into play when you are work when you are running a professional application end to end when you're basically applying devops in a sense which is the trend that everything is moving towards. These are the core skills, and it's a very large area, as you can imagine. Uh, I can't tell you like every like point for point because the, uh, there is like no way. It's gigantic, but uh, it, the, that's the best test that you can use. Can you work in more than one company? Can you jump around? In is there? Do you have a 50/50 hiring rate, or do you have 80/20, or do you have 20/80? Like, if you're you're more often getting like people to recognize you as someone who knows whatever you're doing then well you're basically in a situation where yeah then you have this core skills you don't have to be a senior to be able to like get more you know if you apply for a job if they are on average uh, giving you offers that's you basically in a pretty good position then you have those core skills because you can at the very least get your foot in the door uh, that's my argument. The second question was, how do I know if my if it's time to switch companies? A senior explained to me that one should strive for two out of three things, namely learning, salary, and work-life balance. Well, yeah, I would say that your coworker is pretty right about that one. I, all three are ideal if that's possible. But usually, I say to people, it really is down to you if you're gonna switch jobs or not because it comes down to a personal choice that you have to make which is when do you feel that you are lacking something that is important to you so I usually try to ask myself if I'm developing a, am I learning things am I becoming better am I increasing my value or am I like some in somehow being fulfilled that way and if I'm not I might be consider a different position but it, some people think that salary is very important for example it really comes down to your own comfort level and that's where those core skills comes in because if you have those core skills then you can basically spit in the air and get work wherever you want uh, it does uh, because as I've said before guys a solid junior is is I'm not as uh, of course as seniors are always in highest demand but like you don't get core skills you can acquire when you're a junior developer just as you're a mid-level like that's when when you're a mid-level developer you're basically at that sweet spot where like you can work in any environment so you don't have to like worry that that takes forever to get it takes a little while maybe a few years usually before you feel that comfort level at the very least or that you can do these things but once you're in that position you can be a little bit picky so if you don't feel that you if you feel stressed all the time for example and that is causing you like I like to think of it as a scale if you spend more time feeling bad at work then you feel either nothing or feeling pretty good about yourself then it's probably a good time to you for you to start thinking about is there something else I can is something that I can do about this situation 
So what I want you to take away from this is that core skills are basically the skills that are necessary in order for you to do the job, uh, regardless of basically whatever company you go to. This is not uh, as common as you might think, guys. I interview and I um, hire quite a lot of uh, different people for different positions uh, at this point, even though I still do most of the coding as well. And I can tell you that uh, it's more than a few uh, software developers that like they really only get work because either the companies don't really know what they're hiring or like they're just uh, able to get consultancy gigs or so forth where the hiring process is a little bit spotty but the people who really have the core skills down they usually always are they're always uh, an opportunity for them because when you talk to them you hear like all right they know their stack they know how to build application, like how all the normal stuff works when you ship the code from your laptop out into production, how you work in an agile environment with a team or something like that, and they know how to do testing, unit testing, end-to-end uh, -end testing, like all this sort of stuff. These are the basic, like these are the standard practices that practically every serious IT company is going to expect from you. Uh, when it's not that case, it's usually, as, it's usually a deviation from the norm. And then when it comes to uh, and when it's time to move on, usually it comes down to you and what you value. A good thing to, or as, as was mentioned, learning salary and work-life balance. These are three very good areas to focus on. And ideally, you should try to find a place where you feel satisfied with all of these, if at all possible. But at the very least, I like to suggest to people that every six months or something like that, you should ask yourself, am I content with my current position, is there something that I would like to change? Do I feel like th there's a stronger urge now uh, to go and take a look at something else and then maybe you take a few jo interviews or like just see what's out there because it's usually the biggest tell is how much mental time do you spend on thinking about your choices. If you have a choice that you feel or rather you feel that your salary isn't high enough or you're not really evolving or you feel stagnant or something like that and that is taking up significant time of your, of your mental resources is probably a, a good time to at the very least think about seeing if there's something that might fit better. Have a great day.